Board of Education USD 203 meeting. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. First, I would like to get an approval of the agenda. Any changes, Rafi? No. Make a motion to approve the agenda. Motion and a second. All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed? Motion passes to zero. This time we have the patrons and informational form. At this time I'd like to turn this over to Dr. Day. All right, thank you very much. Good evening. As you can tell, we have a lot of guests that we're going to celebrate tonight. So we are going to start with our power lifters. And tonight, I'd first like to welcome the members of the powerlifting teams who had an outstanding performance in the 4A powerlifting meet at Ford Spot at the beginning of March. First, I'd like to invite the members of the women's team, in addition to their coaches, to the front to be recognized.
years. Thank you. It was a big draw. Yeah. <laughs> At this time, we would like to invite the members of the state qualifying boys bowling team along with their coaches to the front to be recognized.
Very good. Good job, ladies and gentlemen. During these challenging times, libraries of all types have been going above and beyond to adapt to our changing world by expanding their resources and continuing to meet the needs of their Tonight is our pleasure to recognize the staff members from our district libraries and thank them for their service and dedication to the students and staff of Piper. Please join me in welcoming Amy Krause, Piper High School librarian. Well, I understand. 
understand we have no one for the community member input section if I agree. So moving on to item four, the consent agenda. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Motion for a second. 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 All those in favor? Motion passes seven zero. Moving on to the bank reconciliation and warrant registered cash fund balance reports. Make a motion to approve the bank reconciliation and warrant registered cash fund balance reports. We have a motion. Second. And a second. All those in favor? Motion passes seven zero. On to item six, written reports. Questions with classified handling. The only question I think I know I had asked about but the already on enrollment, will this be in their place for it was a great question. So Ashley asked about the current enrollment packet it has the UIAB and this will replace that and so we, we made that change on the one summer signatures. And I did be one to one student device and we can look and contract.
So in between now and then, if there's any additional information that James or I can get to you in that report, please let us know what happened. I, I would just be interested in making the thoughts about treating, treating the iPads and Chromebooks separately. Potentially, so we can talk about that later. You know, we can call it tonight.
We wanted to provide world-class um, professional development, and I'm not um, being over-exaggerating when I say world-class uh, professional development. Defined Learning is going to be um, leading uh, two cohorts uh, through project-based learning and a curriculum framework called Understanding by Design, and uh, this is very uh, rigorous, uh, uh, well-vetted curriculum and uh, for our staff. And then we also wanted to make sure we have priority standards for each grade level with targeted interventions and progress monitoring. One of the biggest conversations that people have in this field is like, is summer school really making a difference? And a lot of times it's hard to really say yes because it's you come in, you have you know six to whatever amount of kids, we're teaching whatever we feel like we want to teach, and then at the end, you know, did it make a difference? But we're going to be following our NTSS protocol, and we've identified some priority standards um, that we're going to be focusing on K through eight. Um, we're also going to be providing physical education for our K through eight students. This work, this is awesome tenfold. One is we don't want our kids just sitting in a classroom, which they won't be, because like I said, it's going to be hands-on project-based learning and with a balance of direct instruction. But we also want to get our kids moving. We want to use cross-curricular integration of our standards and get our kids out, you know, moving and uh, having a good, good time. The other piece that that provides is that we're also going to have a summer uh, school uh, counselor. And so that counselor is going to push into the classroom. And at the same time um, that another group goes to PE, those two teachers will actually have time to plan and look at that progress monitoring. Like, are our interventions working? Giving them time to learn together and have uh, data-driven conversations. And then our, we'll also have instructional coaches. So when those meetings are taking place, that they're, uh, they are really uh, valuable and focused on um, student learning. And then we're also going to have small class size with parents and aid support. And then here's something different that we haven't really provided so much in the past, but it's really competitive compensation. So we've looked at um, providing $25 an hour for teachers and then $20 an hour for our parents and aides. So it's for our parents and aides, that's that extra duty rate. And then for our <coughs> certified staff, it will be slightly above that. And so this is just giving that competitive com compensation to make it a little more attractive after their fatigue. And we can do that because we have ESSER funds that we don't typically have in a normal school year. So, um, and then we're also looking at some micro school concepts and then we have a market value asset attainment for <coughs> our uh, juniors and seniors, which I'm really excited about one of our market value asset attainment initiatives that we're going after. And we are working with um, OPA, our food service, and we are going to be providing a paid internship for our juniors and seniors who are in the culinary arts program. They are going to actually be our summer food service staff. And we just had a real, I'm getting chills like saying it right now. Um, we had a really great meeting today with Kitty Mullins and um, uh, Taylor Spangler, who's one of the culinary arts teachers at the high school. And so we're designing um, that curriculum to meet um, one of the uh, the courses for that um, for that uh, program, and so the kids are going to be able to get a uh, high school credit. They will also get a market value asset of, a, of an internship, and they will also um, get paid for doing you know a, a job for our district. So that is um, really exciting. And we have other market value asset attainment things that are in the works. But that's just one that I think is really cool and innovative. So this just gives you a timeline of what we've been doing so far and where we're at. We met as um, our team to talk about the data. We shared the data with our principals, and then those um, all of our teachers started having conversations in what we call our professional learning communities to gather teacher input. And then we determined our theme and our area of focus, that agent of change and the portrait of graduate competencies. And we drafted our parent letter and we shared that with our principals and our PLCs and they've been in contact with families. And then our teachers made calls for invites and um, have been in contact and our, our, uh, we started working on our list for a member of our roster and then also for staffing. 
Um, right now, we are confirming our staffing needs and we're starting to recruit and interview our staff. We will have a two and a half hour professional development um, on project-based learning, defined learning, and understanding by design framework. And then we're gonna have some professional development and looking at data um, in June, and then we will start our summer learning program in July. And that is it. That's what we're doing. So we're excited, and we also have um, one, one more thing to uh, tidy up is we have our graphics design team um, at the high school working on designing our summer learning graphic and um, we're going to make t-shirts so all the teachers and all the kids who participate are going to have a uh, have a unified t-shirt and then on the last day the great thing about project-based learning is that you do a product presentation like for the community uh, defending whatever that question that you were working on um, with your project and so we're planning and you guys will all be invited but we're planning on the the second to last day, so it'll be the Thursday. Over the lunch hour, we're gonna, um, the kids are gonna bring right community members, they're gonna defend their project, they're gonna show what they've showcased, all that they've learned. Um, we're gonna invite food trucks and for since it's over the lunch hour, so people will be able to have lunch. And then our high school culinary arts um, group is also gonna, that's gonna be their final project, because they're gonna, you know, nothing super cool about grabbing their lunches, but they're gonna be working towards the end is they're gonna be creating a food truck theme and creating the menu and the pricing and doing all that stuff. And then all the proceeds that they generate from that are gonna go back into their FCCLA club at the high school. So, cool stuff. Yeah. That's amazing. Yes, you're welcome. I know a lot of that came from the expert funds, but I'm thinking outside because that's so exciting to see where it's developed and going to be internships in July to these kids to that next level. Great job. Yes, yes, thank you. So when you say like a culinary arts program, is that pretty much FCCLA? Is that, or is it like, is there like no, a... FCC, family, uh, so FCCLA stands for Family, um, Community, and Career Leaders of America. And so that pretty much encompasses anyone who wants to be a family, community, and career leader. However, like one of the domain that's, that's in the um, Family and Consumer Science Department is usually typically leads that. And so it, okay. it goes into that. I just don't recall ever in the past us having or really even talking about a culinary program at Piper, which sounds really bougie. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I, mean, I just didn't know it existed, and so I just want to get a better grasp of it. I, I know that we hired that, um, he's a newer, and he always did really great baked goods at, I think, Piper Fest a couple years ago. But So is he kind of championing that? Is that where this is coming from? That is so cool. Yeah. Well, that was one of the things that we, we took. We were struggling with staffing it, like wondering if same thing. We have teach we have fatigue all over the district and the area of um, running the school district in this pandemic. And so we were we were not sure if we were gonna have the staffing and so we were like, well let's get creative with the staffing. And um, that kind of emerged and I called Taylor and like what do you think? He's like, are you kidding me? You know, like when can we start planning? And so yeah, and then we had that meeting several different meetings leading up to it and it's going to be it's going to be good and is the by invitation i guess and i get kind of the whole thing too if, if they if the student knows that they are going to be a part of this do they know that already uh no so uh the the course that they will be taking is they'll be getting credit for um, community connections there's a class at the high school called community connections it's typically taught in a regular school year you know in the school setting but it is all around providing safe food service for um, the community, right? And so this is that meeting, it meets those standards. And so you have to have the prerequisites for that course in order to apply. So we're gonna be opening it up. You know, one of the things we talked about is we want as much of a real world learning opportunity for our kids as possible. So we're gonna be um, advertising it. So. Taylor's gonna be advertising at the high school, letting them know the criteria for applying. And then we're gonna post it on our district website just, and it's gonna say, like, you have to be a Piper High School student that wants to take this course. And then they're gonna fill out our district application. Then um, Taylor Spangler and Kimmy Mullins are gonna sit down together and they're going to read through the applications and decide which students they want to interview. Okay. And 
and they're going to have it um, like a, a short three to four interview question um, that then they are going to then decide who is going to get to be part of this internship. And then any student who doesn't doesn't get selected, we talked about how we're going to create valuable feedback for the kids so that if you didn't get selected, then we want you to know that you can apply next year and that these are the actions that we need to see you take in order for you to qualify for next year. So we're really creating that growth mindset for our students and we're not like leaving them, you know, hanging. So it's it's going to be really, it's going to be really good and really valuable. And I hope to see that we can, you know, grow, take this first step and then see what else we can provide for our students. And all three of the high school counselors, like they are, know that this is an option or that it could be an option. I just, I feel like that's an area definitely that this is really cool. This, yeah. And this is something that I have seen students struggle with in the past on not being able to have the prerequisites to get into some of those really cool things that they want to. Yeah. And so I think this would be an excellent vehicle for those counselors to be able to communicate us. You know, the schedule's getting kind of all summed up that if you want to do something like that in the future, you probably need to take those classes now. Just because it's right. really yeah. out of box. Absolutely, and that was one of the things that we talked about today. Because ideally, we were really wanting to have it be a course that would make the kids completers in a pathway. And uh, there was a disconnect, like, you know, Taylor said he didn't think that that was really going to be possible. But that, in the future, we want to, it, since it's new, we can't do that. but. We're going to start grooming this as there are certain steps that you need to take in order for this to be possible for you. And so, yeah, that's definitely in the works. And so, one of our so we have three counselors, right? And then they each have different responsibilities. And so, one of them has the uh, responsibility of all of our career and tech, technical education. And so, she's been on, on the planning conversations with them. Of course, you know, she'll be dispersing um, that information going to go out and we talked today kind of what that communication you know matrix looks like like who do I go through and you know we talked about all the things that need to be approved with me and Kitty and things that need to be approved um, with uh, Mr. Wynn and Mr. Tytla just what that communication that stream of communication will look like. Yeah, so before she leaves and I try not to talk too much but two things I'm so proud of this team and everything that they've done. I'm really excited about the sure we remove all the obstacles and that we're inviting everyone based on criteria and not just we only have enough to pay for eight kids or eight, 10 kids or whatever we there. Um, the second thing that I want to draw to your attention is this is just an example. If you've had time to read the Coffin Report and we talk about our wall to wall academies, this will eventually be the kind of experience that every high school student will have in their academy, in their sector. So it's really valuable and relevant for them. Looking at identifying standards and you don't have to be in class for the whole semester. But I'll tell you what, these kids are gonna be working their tails off. And in four to six weeks, they're, they will have completed the same standards that they would in the semester of school, except it will be so real world, it will be crazy. So as we continue to talk about the law of all academies and sectors, this is the kind of stuff I want you to get off the side, the great things that we're doing. Yep. Hey, the way in our summer school and that project based learning as well. So, yep. super excited. Yeah. Thanks to the TNL team. Yep. Yep. Very good. And I, this is just one more question. I'm sorry. So, this is, so let's say this goes really awesome and all of a sudden more people want to be a part of the summer learning program. Is that for the kids that are going to the summer learning program? What if all of a sudden it's like, oh, this is, is it a volunteer or is it a, you know, they would be invited to attend. Are you talking like the culinary the kids, experience? Not the culinary experience, but the students that would be actually coming to the summer learning program. Is that something that they could choose to do if they wanted that? Or is it something that it's more of a selected to get us to where we need to be? Our first priority is going to be the kids that are, are striving in the classroom. Okay. So those are the kids that are being invited. Based on their data, we have some learning recovery that we need. Right. But that doesn't mean in the future we can't get to that enrichment piece. We're also using this as a great opportunity for the teachers to jump into project-based learning. Yeah. It's a completely different paradigm shift. It's really cool. It is. But you have to be willing and ready to do the piece. So we 
we were dipping our toe in the water with a couple of different things, and the effort that was just amazing on the day. Now we have a presentation by Dave Bradley on the Spring Forest facilities. scoreboard on the JV softball field. It's been a long time coming. One thing about it, we have heard nothing but positive from the students and the parents to play on the JV field. And as far as what I'm hearing from them, they like to say thanks for getting them the scoreboard and then waiting for it. Now we're going to do some look back. It's been a while, I know, since we did the gymnasium in the middle school. This is just a Quick catch up of the light purple on top. It is now all purple. And the bleachers going into new bleachers. There are the new bleachers. Another picture of the bleachers. We did install the safety straps on the basketball goals. We've been trying to do this for about the last 10 years. And we finally got them in. It took very minimal time. The guys here four hours installed them all. So now if we have another pulley break or a bolt break, when they're lifting them up and down, they won't come crashing down. We did have one do that about eight years ago. And to top off that gymnasium, they did get their new scoreboard installed. So right now your middle school gym with the renovation of the floor a couple years ago is almost a complete remodel. Uh, there's your stair treads going down to the boys and girls locker room of the high school. They've been installed. Uh, now we don't have two or three missing off each set of stairs. Uh, we have four more sets of stair treads going in in the summer to complete the high school. The high school, all the stairways in the high school will have new treads on them by the end of summer. Now we're going down to the track. <coughs> we had some concerns about the paint wearing loose on the track and everything. Uh, we've been keeping an eye on that through the spring sports. Uh, we have not had any issues really of missing paint. The rubber surface is sticking good to the track. As of right now, we're, we're in good shape with the track. We did install a new sidewalk connecting. No more walking through the pea gravel to get to the stadium. We're starting to look a little more professional. I am sorry the dirt hasn't been put in yet. The dirt and grass seed is coming probably by the end of next week. And then also the thing that I like more than anything is being a grounds person is the shot put area. We did get the new concrete retaining walls around the shot put area. It actually looks a little bit nicer than the rotting railroad ties that we've had in years past. Uh, there again, we talked to grass pad here uh, last week. The grass that we're looking for, we're going to sod around that. Uh, they told us we could probably pick it up at the end of the week. Now we go on to what I call the best right here, the baseball field. 32 years I worked in your district. Right now this is about the best the baseball field has looked. Uh, that is your picture from today. I actually took that picture today after I mowed that ball field. <laughs> Still don't like mowing it that much. But, um, <laughs> The field is holding up pretty good. Uh, we are probably looking at uh, putting down a little bit more shell after the uh, season, which we knew we would because of the rain, the moisture, the kids playing on it is packing it down. But that would be about the only expense we got. We are getting ready to spray the morning track. We just got to get out of the wind and the rain so we can get the roundup on the morning track and get it drug. Everybody is complimented. Julie is almost embarrassed of painting the concession stand. Everybody is complimented on the concession stand. It does look a lot nicer than green. And the bleachers on the baseball field, we replaced all the rotted wood with new wood, and we make sure there's no splinters. 
and the best for last, the monument sign was put in Friday. Uh, it should be up and running hopefully within a week. Any questions?
just to be clear, it passed in the House, right? And it's it's as it gone it's going to the Senate on the third. Uh, that is the way I understood the class, but no, yeah, no, no final decision right at this point. So. Um, Any other questions regarding the budget? You'll see some negatives and positives. We'll probably be doing some uh, budget realignment, those are coding issues and whatnot. But bottom line, it's okay. All right. That is uh, everything I know about the budget. Thank you. 
buying stuff and doing stuff that's probably going to be long gone before the bonds pay for. So that's kind of my rationale. The biggest ticket item, which uh, does show on the front page under what's being recommended, this is an additional item that was not approved last month, is the roofing at the uh, middle school. This is just uh, an acknowledgement to proceed with that project. Obviously, that would go out to the public bid and, uh, before we did anything here. Let's uh, that bid into the, to the board for approval. So with that, I will be quiet and address any questions. By what was the big change on the data truck? Uh, I asked Dave uh, to get it outfitted for uh, salt, snow okay. plow, uh, Couple of things. So now we have two, two of those nice vehicles. Dave, I'm going to turn it over to you. Yeah, we'll have two, yeah. two, two salts for it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. The truck is going to two and a half hour to put the salt in our lot for an hour. You don't want to sit on the back of the truck and toss it out if you want to buy it? No. Okay, you still want to get that guy by the road. So, I, I mean, we have two motions here, right? We've got to move the we got to move the funds from the privacy group over to the bond approval and actually move the road. Okay. Yeah. So I think we have it right in there for you. Yeah, yeah. and, and you do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Make a motion to be classified $543,190 previously approved as funded to the capital operating fund to be funded by the series 2018 general obligation bond. Second. I have a motion, I have a second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion passes 6-1. Thank you. Can I make a motion to approve the remainder of the project as presented in the revised 2020-2025 capital plan? Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Motion passes 7-1. Yeah, we just got to keep on rolling. We'll just roll. Yep. Uh, lots of flooring. I'll uh, turn it over to Dave if there's any questions, but we've got uh, six restrooms at Piper Prairie, four at Piper High School that need uh, epoxy floor replaced, basically. Uh, we did put this out in public bid. Bid tab is attached. Uh, I will point out that a little unusual. You will not often see me come in recommending uh, something other than the low bid. Uh, in this case, uh, the, uh, the low bid or bid a different product. We specified the product that was used in Piper Creek Elementary uh, because it's been a very good product thus far. Process so uh, and, and the uh, four state did talk to me about that. I told them they could turn in the bid. Uh, the specs may be similar or the same. I can't speak to that, uh, but it is a different product, different manufacturer, different uh, uh, brand, etc. So uh, thus my rationale.
So uh, we're trying to be transparent, hopefully it's up for other opportunities uh, for uh, folks to bid on more uh, projects when appropriate. In this case, we've got two bids, uh, one from the Exploring and the other from the Interior Service Enterprises. And I do believe Interior Service Enterprises uh, did the work out of Piper Creek. It is the exact same product that both firms did bid. So my recommendation is the low bid in this case with the interior service. Make a motion to approve the working contract for carpet floors and carpet interior service enterprises in the amount of $98,000 and $24. I have a motion to second. All those in favor? Motion passes 7 0. Thank you, Board. Go ahead, Mike. Okay. Yes. Great, absolutely. So you had a system written report last month. This month we're writing the quarter. We did have one great suggestion from the board member, and that was to move the communication matrix near the front of the handbook. So those have been updated for you from last month. Those will be the only changes. Except I will have you notice in the high school handbook, um, they went through a great process over the last two to three weeks. Um, some of the high school students felt like there was some cultural sensitivities with the dress code, and so they went through a process of bringing the kids and teachers and their BLT and went through that, and so that has been changed just a little bit through that equity lens, which you're just going to continue to hear from us over and over and over again. So um, all of the handbooks have the communication matrix in the front, and then the high school will change their dress code, and we will look forward to come, uh, some communication with the middle school as well moving forward, and then we'll be proud of the so this is a process that we go through annually. It just sets the, the procedures and expectations. Um, we know when everyone understands their expectations, everything can run a little bit smoother. So at this point, we would be asking for your approval, and this would be for 21-22 student Nobody has any questions. I would ask for a motion to approve. Uh, I'll make a motion to uh, to approve design studio ideas and open district quarter application to create a long range facility master plan at a cost not to exceed twenty thousand dollars to be approved. I'm going to cover the twenty eighteen bond Motion and second. All those in favor, raise your hand. Opposed? Motion passes 6 to 0. Thank you. 
other students. So they outfit a whole lab. Um, our part of the deal is that we provide a teacher, and then we will work with alignment with KCK Community College for articulated credit. There will be somewhere between 20 and 22 hours that students can attain towards their associate's degree. On top of it, if they're not interested in going into that field, they can lay, layer that right on to engineering. So it's that CTE pathway where we can go right to the workforce so we can continue on our education. Um, with that, then as they're going through that, not only is they articulating credit, but then they will have an internship at Garmin as well. And so that actually can lead to an apprenticeship and then a job. So it's a super awesome program. We are just absolutely thrilled that they have reached out to us. So again, as we talk about our wall-to-wall -wall academies and those market value assets, um, the students in this program will get their college, if you have that college credit, the internships, and then go into that job. So the super opportunity with that, super excited um, to be working with Garmin and KCK on that. Our goal is to have that ready for the 2022 so we'll work on it over the next school year and have it ready for enrollment for 2023. Um, secondly, our ESSER II grant funds. Um, we've talked a lot about that this year. You know, our first round went to our student devices and Canvas and those things that we need for remote learning. Tonight, Jolene gave us a great presentation on how we're going to use part of that for summer school and recovering that summer learning. And then lastly, um, tomorrow, we will be posting a position that we feel like is vital for us to do with our youngest learners and recovering the learning and the literacy for early childhood through the first grade. Looking at their literacy scores, Jolene shared two meetings ago, um, as we looked at some data that we have some goals which we attribute to remote learning and COVID. Um, so we'll be posting a position, it's called an early childhood coordinator, so we'll report to Jolene. Right now, Jolene wears two hats. She's our, our administrator, early childhood administrator, and teaching and learning. So this person will take over a lot of the responsibilities Additionally, they will serve as the literary specialist that serves at not only the early childhood but kindergarten first graders. So we have another meeting interventions for our students. So we will be posting that position tomorrow and using our ESSER funds to pay for that. What's the plan for that job in the future? Is that just a one year deal? So our goal would be we either continue to use ESSER funds or we build it into our general fund and we bring it into the position. So this okay. would not be something that we see going away okay. once we don't have us with funds, but we want to make a commitment and love which funds we pay for that in the future. Yeah, good question. Thank you. Um, our district COVID members continue to put those in the Tuesday talk. We just continue to thank our public so much for their mitigation strategies. I have a new update to share with you tonight. The health department reached out to us and they would like to work and help us bring vaccinations to our students that are 16, 17, 18 years old. So tomorrow in the Tuesday talk, I will be sending out a Google survey where the parents of kids that are 16, 17, and 18 will let us know their interest, and then we'll work with that group. But we, our hope is to have our students that are 16, 17, and 18 vaccinated before the end of school year. So that would be free of charge as well. So again, a great partnership with the health department. Super excited about that. And then lastly, right off the press, um, we received an email today from Dr. Randy Watson, who is the of education. Um, we can, we can, and you guys have heard about that. There is a STAR recognition program that recognizes district success in the outcome areas measured by the Kansans, um, what they said was important to them. And today we learned that on behalf of both the State Board of Education and the Kansas State Department of Education, the Piper School District is being recognized for the following areas. Post-secondary effectiveness, we're getting a silver. Graduation rates, we're getting a blonde. Prepared for high school graduation, we're getting a copper. Commissioner's Award, we earned the Commissioner's Award with honors. Social Emotional Growth, we received a bronze, and the Individual Plan of Study, we received a gold. Um, so we are extremely appreciative of our great students, our employees, our families, the district for coming together. This is brand new, um, and so we haven't really even dug into the rubric yet, but it just shows the amazing work already. So our goal now is to dig into the rubrics and then figure out how we can be getting, you know, that gold standard on everything. But we, we are just so proud. There are so many things to do to celebrate. So those are the end of my comments. I just had a question just for my clarification. How did 
garment garment notes and capsules, but that in collaboration with you or with yes. thank you so much. I mean I I realize there's a lot going on with Amber uh, reaching out as well too, but this is the kind of development that just gives us goosebumps to just yeah. be having these opportunities for our students to succeed. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Super excited and um, KCK doesn't have this program, so mm -hmm. they're also we're we're really propelling them in that area as well. So it's a great example again of our academies and thinking about our our stakeholders differently and the fact that they have seen now in two years at Barnum that they are now replacing their workforce with clientele that they basically had since they were 16 or 17 in the classroom. So we're going to do the same thing. Yeah, I guess the first of a few Uh, on to item 10, continuous improvement topics. Anyone want to put in there? Future improvement topics. Okay, moving on to item 11, executive session. Was that for me? Okay, Pat, I'm sorry, I should have scratched that. I wasn't here for the, for the agenda because I thought that might have been for somebody else's piece. Okay, that's it. Great. All right, well, we're off to the final item. For a motion to adjourn.